Hey guys, what's going on? I added a little bit of um, garland just for a cute little bit on the picture. I should have put it just a little bit lower, but then my head probably would have been poking up. Anyway, um, I'm a little sad today. I'm a little upset today. Nothing is going on um, besides the world. Um, nothing is really going on. My mom and I had a wonderful day out. We had a wonderful day. We haven't had such a wonderful day in a very long time. And we just, you know, we had lunch at Perkins today. We went shopping. We both had to get stuff done. And errands done and all that stuff. I'm fidgeting. When I'm working through an issue, I fidget. And I can't stop moving. <laughs> um... I've been, gu been guilty of this in the last week. I feel like when December 1st hits, it's like everybody in Whoville, Whoville you know, oh my gosh, it's, it's five more minutes till Christmas, or it's it's 22 hours and and 13 minutes and 45 seconds till Christmas. Ding dong, ding dong. Tick, tick. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, da you know, like I've been doing that a lot this past week. And I've been nervous about getting my items in from my places that I've shopped at that I can get them in soon enough to so I could ship them out. And I just have been doing the anxiety ridden, oh my gosh, I've got only I got only got nineteen days left, I only got eighteen days left, I only got you know, like, as soon as it's going to be the 10th, and there's only going to be 15 days left till Christmas. And I said to God last week, I said, if people could have Thanksgiving where, where it is right now, and then push Christmas to, like, the 1st through the 10th of February, then we'll have, like, almost two and a half months to get ready for Christmas. What I, I don't like is the fact that Christmas is so close to Thanksgiving. Because then, as soon as the days click by, I feel like it gives everybody so much more anxiety to get everything done. And then that anxiety brings us away from the Christmas cheer and brings us away from the natural reasons why we would be joyful and happy and kind and loving at Christmas time. And for the last three, four times I've been in a shopping center, like the Walmart or ShopRite, somewhere where I'm grocery shopping, or even just another, you know, department stores or whatever, and um, I'm standing there and there's so many people are just all horses with our blinders on, like just only looking at ourselves. I gotta do this and I'm doing, I'm doing the list in my head and I'm doing this and I gotta get this and I gotta get this and I gotta do And we all have our blinders on, you know. And we're not seeing each other. And I stood today in ShopRite for like two and a half minutes. And that's a long time. Two to three minutes. Just waiting for other people to go so I could go. I could have been snotty and put my card out there and and pushed in front of somebody. And But I don't want to do that because that's the opposite of love at Christmas time. I find it asinine that we are so rude to people like in the stores because we're rushing or busy or you know either cut in, in front of somebody or right on you know like the worst thing that I hate is somebody right on my butt it's like back up just a little bit if your car is close to hitting my butt and I'm walking you need to back up a little bit you are don't need to get something done that fast or you are on my butt that is sends me straight off. It just sends me just from zero to a thousand in two seconds. It just sends me off. It's like, you know, you have another five minutes. Okay, you have to get somewhere. Okay, you have to go home. This world is all with instant gratification every second of the day. And it hurts my heart. We're missing the mark in this world. A lot of people, including myself some days, I'm not going to exclude myself because I am also a human being and I also do the same thing. We're missing the mark. Um, I think it's asinine for people to be rude in the stores, 
cutting in front of other people, standing in line and tapping their feet or going, ah, not being patient for somebody else to take their turn. Everybody's got to wait. It's nobody gets by. You know, there's not like a secret lane somewhere and say, come here. Come here. Nobody else knows about this, but come on in. You know, like everybody has to wait their turn and everybody wants instant gratification. And it kills my heart because today I waited for about two to three minutes for people in their carts in ShopRite just to pass, to go where they have to go. Go into the next aisle, go down that way, go down that way, wherever. And not like, not one person looked at me and acknowledged that I was waiting for all of them to go. They were so busy in themselves with those blinders on like the horses have when they're racing. So blind in themselves that they didn't even see me just sitting there. And when people do see me sitting there, they're like, they kind of look at me like, like, why is she not going? Why is she not doing anything? And I just sit there and I, I kind of look at people while they go and they do their thing and they're just so oblivious and not one of them acknowledged me or said thank you or Merry Christmas, have a great day. Not anybody looked at me and smiled or anything. And are we too busy trying to be trying to get things for other people for Christmas and we're missing the mark to me Christmas is not only about Jesus but about loving one another and being kind to one another and if we are not being those things while we're out of our homes no matter where we are you know no matter if we're you know, at the bank, at the post office, we're shopping, we're at our job, we're doing errands. If we're so busy on being in ourselves, you know, I would like the world to be loving and kind all year round. But you would think that that would happen especially, especially at Christmas, but it gets worse at Christmas. Because that, that, you know, so many days are left tick, 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 tock. You know, it's it hurts my soul that people are so blind, that they're so focused on themselves that they can't see anybody else but themselves. They can't see anybody else but what they're doing, about what they have to do next, about what they're thinking. Even if they're thinking about somebody else while picking out a gift, you know, I mean, it's just, it's sad. And I know... I have a different kind of heart than a lot of people. Not that I'm better, because I'm a sinner as well. Lately, the past couple days, I've been doing the same thing, like prioritizing my time wrong. I do all the good stuff, and then it comes 9 o'clock at night, and I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do my scriptures. And then I do all, all that other stuff first. When I should be spending in my time in scripture first in the morning as soon as I wake up. Or as soon as I have my meal or take a shower. Have a coffee, whatever. And just sit and be in the Lord. I've been doing the same thing. I gotta do this, and I gotta do this, and I gotta get that done. And what am I gonna have for Christmas dinner? And what am I gonna have for Christmas dessert? And what am I gonna do this? And what am I gonna do this? And am I gonna have bunny for um, New Year's? And what am I gonna do? And da 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 da. Just so busy in myself that that I was making myself crazy and was extremely obsessing to the max about getting all the gifts in on time and I've realized in the last couple of years and I have to keep on reminding myself you know I'm not gonna die if I can't give somebody their Christmas gift until after Christmas. If they get their Christmas gift in January, the world is not just going to fall off and cease to exist. I'm not going to die. The other person's not going to die. We will be okay and they will get their Christmas gift late. I, I, I think that we all kind of fall sometimes into that 
why not now, why not now, why not now? And, you know, I, 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 the other day I kind of, sometimes I go to the mirror in the bathroom and I say, Karen, stop that. <laughs> Sorry. Stop that now. That's enough. Stop it. <laughs> and I say, you know, um, you're doing this, 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 and this. Now you don't need to be doing this because that's not going to come for two weeks now. Leave that for two weeks like, till now. And then I say something like, you're being obsessive. Stop obsessing because number one, obsessing leads you to anxiety and le leading you to anxiety leads you to obsessing more. You obsess and then you get anxiety and then you obsess more. And then it's just a, it's just a circle. And I'd sit there and I'd talk to myself in the mirror and I said, stop it. You know, and I said, it's okay. And so I said to myself, take a few breaths. In and out. It's okay. If I don't get this particular gift before Christmas, that person is still going to be there next month. They're most of the time. I mean, you know, never know when God's going to take you. But most of the time, there is going to be a tomorrow. And there's going to be a day after tomorrow. There's going to be a day after that. Um, we just spend so much time obsessing about, I need to get this. Like, you know, with the, the blind, you know, the blinded. I need to get this, and I need to do 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 this. And then we obsess so much that we can't sleep. Then we bring it into the next day. Then we get cranky. And then we take our crankiness out and other people at the store because we couldn't get our sleep or because we were obsessing or because we were doing other stuff. Um, that's the one thing that I've never done. Well, I can't say never, but not since I've been saved, since I've like really like got it, that I might come home and rant for an hour and a half and be really cantankerous and cranky. But I don't ever take my crud out on anybody else. If I am having a cruddy day, sometimes I just won't go out and say, you know what? The store is going to still be there tomorrow. Walmart will still be there tomorrow, whether I'm having a good day or not. And I'd rather go out on a good day than go out on a bad day. I don't want to take my issues and infect anybody else. Because God forbid I was nasty to somebody else in the store. Then they took that and they went home and they da 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 then they took it the next day and put and was nasty at somebody at work or was nasty to one of their kids. I don't want to create drama for anybody else. So if I'm having a bad day, I might implode silently at home or loudly at home, but I at least do it at home so where nobody else is going to be um, affected by it. And my, my heart is just so sad that people are so blind. A lot of people are so blind to the fact that Christmas is about love. Christmas is not about rushing to get the next gift in Whoville. Karen, Christmas is not about obsessing over which package comes next. Checking the tracking three to five times a day, which I have done the last four days. I have done that. Karen, you know, if you want a certain you know, recipe to be done. You want something, you know, for Christmas Eve or Christmas night. The store will still be there next week. The stuff will still be there next week. You might have to find a different brand. You might have to find a different kind. But it will still be there next week. And if they don't have it at that store, then you can find it at a different store. So for us to just really take a seat back and realize that Christmas is loving on one another, being kind and generous, hoping, like, I'm holding doors open, saying thank you, saying you're welcome, saying God bless you, saying have a great day, complimenting people on necklaces, women love that, complimenting on the jewelry, complimenting women on their nails, complimenting on a nice blouse, or if they smell good, say, oh, what's that smell? You smell pretty nice. I mean, I've done that a lot, and people look at me like, like how I notice how people smell good. I like good smelling people, whether they're guys or girls. And you just can compliment. That's why we're here is to 
to complement each other. We're not here for just ourselves. And we lose sight of that, especially at Christmas. So as much as I am giving you a sermon, a lecture, a talk to, I am saying, Karen, it's time to pull yourself back. Take a seat on the couch for a minute, for 10 minutes, for 20 minutes, for half an hour, and just relax and focus on God. Focus on what today can I do for God, for his kingdom? How can I bless somebody else today so they can in turn bless somebody else tomorrow? And by me blessing on others, I feel in turn that I have done something wonderful for God and I feel at peace and I feel blessed. So I know it might be a little um, wordy, might be a little much for some people, not because anybody's silly or stupid, but um, sometimes I feel like I talk at people instead of talking to people. And I've got to work on that. So as much as I've talked to you today, I have really talked to myself. The store will be there next week. If you need something for your recipe, it will still be there. Or it'll be at a different store. Or if it isn't, you, the world is not going to implode because you have to sit back for a minute and take a breather. And I'm going to work on not looking at my tracking information 5,000 times tomorrow when my reborn. When they get there, when he get when... Well, now you know what it is. <laughs> I can't go back and do this video all over again. When it gets here, it gets here. So, just to take a minute and just really focus on what Christmas means. Christmas does not mean go spending a thousand dollars on your relatives that you don't like, that you either love or you don't love. It's not about the gifts. It's about the gift of your heart. You know, even though they brought, um, what is it? Um, I'm going to miss, miss this widely, like wide, you know, like the ball and then, you know, kick. I'm going to miss it real wide. Um, frankincense, myrrh, and the other one. Yes, they brought gifts, but the gift was Jesus. The gift was, you know, God's heart. God's heart is the gift. You know, phones are not the gift. Computers are not the gift. Cameras are not the gift. Shirts are not the gift. It was Jesus' heart that was the gift. And that's Jesus' heart that you have to live through every day, all year long, especially during Christmas. So, yeah. I am, I am just, I'm drilling this into me. I'm just... I'm really just drilling it, you know. I'm missing the mark. So far this year, I've missed the mark. And even though I, I you know, I um, I waited for a guy today in um, most of Perkins, and he had one of those um, canes with like the four things on it, and he was walking. And he's like, "Come on!" I'm like, "No!" I'm like, "I, I can, I have enough patience that you can take ten seconds to slowly walk this way." I don't have to hurry. I said, no, you come on. And he was passing me. I saw he had a vet. He was a good 65. He was, he was good 70, something years old. I said, thank you for your service. I said, you're welcome. And he just kept on walking. And, and what is it going to take but just a little bit of love and a little bit of kindness or a lot to bless and brighten somebody's day? You know? People, I mean, especially cashiers, they're so used to people being impatient and kind of being cranky. You know, what's it going to take for you to say, oh, wow, that's a really nice blouse, or I love your nails, or, you know, your hair looks really nice, and what's it going to take to bless somebody else? That's not a whole lot. So I'm going to stop talking now because I have to go and read my scriptures. And then I can just rest for the rest of the night. Not obsess 
about what I can get done or what I have to get done, but just rest. And just be in the presence of the Lord, really. It's just, that's all Christmas is about. It's Jesus and God. So, love you so much. Sorry if I ranted on a little bit longer. I just, I really had to get it out. And when I say I cried when I came home today, I really, I cried my heart. It, it's so sad that we busy ourselves and we think, oh, well, God, we think we're so important. You know, we think we're just so smart and we're so important. We think we're all that and, and a bag of chips and we're not, we're not nothing compared to God. I mean, we are beautiful daughters and sons to the throne, to the king. But compared to God and his kingdom, we're not, you know, we think we're so important. We think, you know, we're so high and mighty. And we're not. So love you so much, and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye, guys.